Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video review. Today we're talking about NordVPN. We're going to show you how to use it from beginner level to master level. We're going to be showing you each individual section of the application, discussing some little quirks and some things that might give you issues, as well as how to use it to its maximum capacity. Before we get to that guys, if you want to help support the channel and test out some of my favorite products, you might want to check out some of my links and discount codes in the description down below. Some of my favorite products on this channel include Incogni. Incogni is a great service to remove information about yourself on the internet so someone doesn't dox you. Additionally, if you're looking to delete more information about yourself, you might need to do it within the apps you use day to day. A service like Redact will help you do that. You could delete all your Discord DMs, all your Discord messages, all your Reddit posts, and even stuff on Instagram too. Definitely a great service to protect your privacy online if you're starting to get paranoid like me. If you guys are thinking about investing in crypto or stocks, my preferred option is eToro. It's one of the few exchanges out there that is very reputable. It has no history of being hacked. You get really good interest on it, 4.9% annual interest, which is the highest you can really get right now. And it has all the popular cryptos that you really want to invest in, like Ethereum and Bitcoin, a super easy to use interface. And I do believe you could get even a sign up bonus if you use my link in the description down below you don't have to support the channel if you don't want to you can check out these services on your own and like i said this is not sponsored but those affiliate links directly help support the channel all right guys let's get into this nordvpn in-depth look and show you how to use it in totality so basically the way the app works is that when you first download it it's going to give you a little tutorials and it's pretty much going to encourage you to sign into your nord account you should get this uh, account information in an email and then you're pretty much just going to log into the website and it'll log you straight into the application from here you could pick a nearby server we could pause it by doing this which is basically going to make the vpn pause for around five minutes this can be useful for certain things. Let's say you're having some issues, you wanted to test if the VPN's causing it, or either something on your local network you need to control. In my case, my Elgato streaming lights, they only work if I pause it, and it's kind of a bummer. Uh, ExpressVPN is the only application I know that has like this way to let the VPN be on but not interfere with some of those things, and it would be cool if Nord added that one day, but I haven't seen that yet. And ExpressVPN is missing a lot of other things. You know, we always want the perfect VPN, right? But if we're taking a look at the rest of the things, we can kind of resume you know connect now usually if you pick the kind of country you're in it will usually pick the fastest kind of server for your specific location and you can also do it on the map if you want you could zoom in to specific pick a specific server on the map like this if you prefer more of a visual kind of method you can also kind of zoom out like this um, but if we take a look at some of the other options you can also see a couple different other servers um, up here at the top um, we could talk about meshnet in a second but basically there's a wide variety of different servers and what is exact purpose of them uh, why well, just accidentally disconnected double vpn is exactly what it sounds is that base you're going to be connected to vpn twice it theoretically offers you more security and more encryption but honestly i don't really see much use case for it but once you push it to dedicated ip you just click here and it should connect and be assigned to your account so at least they made it easy that way so that is kind of cool this can be useful if you want to avoid captures and stuff like that and it's an add-on charge on the website we have obfuscated servers but for some reason i can't get this to work i'm not really sure why if you try connecting to it it'll try to kind of connect to different ways um, at least I've seen other users having issues with this. Um, theoretically, you could just use OpenVPN. Basically, what you're going to want to do, it looks like there's a new version of Nord available. And that's a good instance to show you how to update the application, I suppose. Um, that's I mean, Maybe they fixed the, the servers with Obfuscation not working. But basically, when you update, you're just going to click there. Um, and it should relaunch with the new version. So there you go. I was just using this yesterday, so it seems like an application update came out today. It should keep you logged in. But if we're talking about the stealth or if you're having problems with your VPN connecting, basically what you can do is go to the connection settings and change to OpenVPN TCP. And like I said in the beginning of this video, that's one reason why I wanted to make this video is show you some tricks and things like that, some workarounds and everything like that. Not every VPN perfect and some are gonna have issues. And this is one of the ones I've found in NordVPN. 
but some people suggest just use instead of the obfuscated servers. As you can see, it's still not working. Um, basically, what you could do is go into the settings um, and then just switch to OpenVPN. That might resolve some of your issues. But if you're not having any VPN connection issues, you probably just want to use NordLynx anyways. This is their WireGuard. Um, I don't really know why they renamed it to NordLynx, but there you go. Basically, it's WireGuard just like every other VPN has. If we take a look around some of these other settings, you could take a look at Auto Connect. Basically, what Auto Connect does is that as soon as you start your computer, NordVPN will automatically connect. Personally, I like to keep this disabled because I find it can get annoying. You can even customize which server you want it connected to or something like that. Additionally, you won't be connected de depending on the network, so you can also customize it a little bit more. Also, you can um, customize what happens when you close down the application. I would prefer that it be disconnected, um, so you could customize that. You can also use custom DNSs if you do want, um, like Quad9 or Adblock or something like that, which could be useful. And you also have a couple other things like the ability to stay invisible on LAN if you don't want your vis a device visible. Um, or you can also re allow remote access. So that is kind of interesting. Um, we also have the MeshNet feature, which I could talk about, and that's kind of similar to that. Uh, basically what MeshNet is, is it basically lets you turn on this feature that if you're on a separate network, you could connect back to the original device on that network and you kind of link your devices that way. I've made a couple of videos about this, but it's still confusing for some people. If that sounds too confusing for you, it might not be worth using. But for example, one use case could be you're having NordVPN online on this computer and you have a Plex server and maybe you're at a friend's house or a hotel and you have MeshNet installed on your laptop um, with the NordVPN app or you could therefore connect back to your home computer and watch the content on that computer or even share files back and forth. You could do the same thing with a game. You could get your friend to install Nord um, and link the devices and you could play games together like you're on the same network. So it's a pretty cool feature. It is a little bit more of an advanced feature, um, but it could be something you want to take advantage of. The cool thing is this is free. It doesn't even really require a NordVPN subscription, which is cool. So it does kind of compete with some other services out there like Tailscale, which are also free. So this is a cool little bonus and you really haven't seen too many um, other VPNs really kind of come at this market. But as you can see here, here's some of the use cases. You could transfer files, very useful to transfer files from your phone to your computer. Um, and as well as some other stuff. They have a lot of tutorials, so if you're more interested, just click on the learn more section. Here's a section where we have like a dark web monitor. This is kind of like the bonus things that you might have with NordVPN account, depending on the plan you bought. Basically, it's gonna monitor your email and let you know um, if it's been part of a data breach. Now, mine says it hasn't been part of a data breach since I don't use this email for many things besides signing up for some services. Um, but if it has been, it will let you know. Um, and you could clear the leak as if you, you kind of knew about it. So uh, going from the GUI, we have MeshNet and the dark web monitor. Threat protection is kind of a cool little feature. It's kind of like an antivirus light with NordVPN. It's not a fully fledged antivirus like something like Surfshark offers, which is a sister company kind of owned by the same people. Um, but the threat protection here kind of will protect you against malicious downloads. I think of it kind of like a real time protection kind of feature and you could kind of turn these on if you want. Um, and this is also like a DNS way to block ads, so that is pretty cool. Um, and here is the main thing with the different servers. We also have um, the Onion over VPN. This will launch Tor over VPN if you really want to do that. Honestly, probably not really worth it. The speeds are going to be much slower. Like I said, with obfuscated, not really worth it. Double VPN, not really worth it. P2P, it doesn't really seem like you even need to use it. So for most of these things, you could kind of just ignore them. I think NordVPN could kind of clean up this area a little bit just because you don't really need most of those server options. But we could take a look at the settings again. We kind of talked about some of the other things, but we also have the ability to change between the light and dark mode if you want to in the appearance section. Um, you can also customize how it launches on Windows and stuff like that. Another cool thing that I wanted to talk about with Nord is that we have the diagnostics panel and this is kind of a cool little feature that I didn't really notice before and you don't really see it in that many VPNs. Basically, you could click on this button to run diagnostics and NordVPN has a very cool helper here to flush your network, which is cool. Um, you can also collect logs, I think, to send it to troubleshooting. You can even reset the application to get a clean start of it, turn off DNS casing and uh, disable or re-enable the audit policy. So I really like this network flush 
flash feature, it will run through some kind of common console commands like IP config, flush DNS. It will kind of reset your network adapter. And it's a pretty cool tool that can help you resolve some issues. So it's pretty cool that they have that included. We can talk about some of the other things within the application. We have the kill switch. Basically, this is going to annihilate your internet if the VPN has any issues. This can be useful with certain applications like torrenting if you don't want to leak your IP. You can also do it by app per app basis to kill that app if NordVPN has any issues so you won't leak your IP while torrenting. Split tunneling is a cool feature that lets you pretty much use Nord for certain things and not other things and you could use it for specific applications. Let's say you only want to use NordVPN for Qubit torrent. You can add it here in this section and you can game and do everything else perfectly fine and leave NordVPN all the time and not have to worry about that at all. So it's a pretty cool feature. Other than that, I think I've gone over most of the core components of the application and how to use each section. Um, let me know if you have any comments down in the comments down below. Um, I hope this helped you guys. If you haven't purchased Nord and you wanna re-up your subscription and you found this video useful, you can use my link in the description down below and I'll see you in the next video very soon.